using the wind meter. One of the exercises performed for the Sandwatch project is gauging wind speed. To accomplish this, a wind meter is used. However, it is important to know the parts of a wind meter before using it. Wind meter parts Top side opening Low velocity scale High velocity scale White sphere Two bottom side openings located in the back of the wind meter Procedure Number 1 Place the wind meter with the velocity scales facing you and the two bottom side openings facing the wind. Number 2. Be careful not to cover the bottom side openings, since this is where the wind will enter the instrument in order to be measured. Number 3. Observe the movements of the white sphere inside the center cylinder. Number 4. Observe the low velocity values between which the sphere holds itself. If it is more than one value, calculate an average between them. Number 5. If the sphere remains near the top all the time, cover the top side opening with your fingertip. Number 6. Observe and write down the numerical values using the high velocity scale. Using a compass. You will use a compass in many of the exercises performed for the Sandwatch project in order to determine the direction of the movement of the waves, currents, and wind. In this annex, we will learn to use this instrument. Before starting to read the compass, it is first necessary to identify some of its parts. Compass parts Direction of travel arrow It is used to do the reading. Orienting arrow Degree dial. Magnetic needle. This arrow always points towards Earth's magnetic north. North-south lines. Auxiliary direction lines. Scale. Procedure. Number one. Place the compass in a horizontal position, placing it as straight as possible over the palm of your hand. This is very important since any inclination can affect the reading. Number two, point with the direction of travel arrow towards what you want to measure. When measuring waves and wind, point the compass in a right angle perpendicular to the direction in which what you are measuring is coming from, meaning waves and wind. You can use the diagram presented in this video that shows the compass in respect to the waves. Number 3. Once the direction of travel arrow is in the correct position, move the degree dial until the north of the dial coincides with the magnetic needle. Number 4. Identify which value of the degree dial is aligned with the direction of travel arrow. This will be your measurement. Number 5. If the arrow is perfectly aligned with one of the cardinal points, this will be the direction from where the thing you are measuring is coming from meaning waves or wind. For example, north, south, east, or west. Number six, if it is located between two cardinal points, this will be your measurement. For example, if it is located between east and south, the measurement will be southeast. If you wish to be more specific, you can write the degrees, which is the value that aligns with the orienting arrow. For example, 111 degrees southeast. Number seven, Remember that this only works for measuring the directions of waves and wind. Number 8. In the exercise about currents, you measure in the direction where the currents are going to and not where they are coming from. Number 9. To measure the direction of the current, repeat all the previous steps. The only difference is that now you will point with the direction of travel arrow towards where the currents are going. Therefore, the compass will be placed parallel to the current's movement, that is, parallel to where the current is going. <laughs>